Morning, Fifi. Hello. Don't mind me. I'm just spooning ice. Why is that okay for your... Uh... Wait. So, basically, I um, it's for my water bottle because I've got to go to Physio today because apparently I know what my early Christmas present is. It's Physio with Hamish. Actually, to be fair, Hamish is rather amazing. He's a lovely guy. Um, so, we're going to go off and do Physio and then... Um, grab any last minute things that we need. I don't think we do need anything, but I feel like we'll probably need something. Um, and then we're going to uh, pick up Dave. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to go on a bit of a bit of a road trip with uh, Hermes and you're taking Sisyphus and you're going to wear your neck brace. Uh, yeah? I don't really like it. Well, they don't like it, but... It does help, but I don't like it. My neck wasn't nearly as sore last night. So there we go. Yeah, I know, but I don't fucking like it. I've got you a matching one. We could have his and her. I don't need one. Yeah, I know, but you couldn't. We, what about like, um, no, what I about think, solidarity uh, and shit? No, my neck is. Look, uh, I think uh, my neck there. is. Uh, my neck is plenty. It's plenty hard enough from years of motorcycle helmet, safety helmets. All right. Look at you being all boastful. Oh. My neck's plenty good enough because I'm amazing. I think my neck's a little bit longer than I realised though, because you're a giraffe. Well, yeah, because it doesn't actually fit. Like, I'm thinking it's supposed to fit closer, isn't it? Like, at the top, is it? Yeah, I think it's all right. thing is, is you'd normally crack it and move it and wiggle it. Yeah, but it I'm thinking, like, maybe a little bit more would prop up the neck, and then I wouldn't be able <laughs> well, like to I see, Yeah, well, that's what yeah, I said to you. If you, put your, if you had a jumper or something under it, it would be just right, because you haven't... But if you've got a scarf or something... I was just about to think about maybe I could um, put yeah, a scarf on. Put a scarf on underneath it, so it holds it up like that. And yeah, because I can just about crack my neck in it. Yeah, but you're not meant to crack Yeah, I know, but that's because it's not tall enough, whereas I won't be able to see that on that. Oh. Yeah, I know, but it's, it, look, right, yeah, it's all very well for you non, non fucking cripple to be all like, oh, I'm not supposed to do that, but I get, I get I'm not supposed to do that, but my body doesn't do what it's supposed to do either, so i got to pop it back in because otherwise I get all grumpy, and you don't like grumpy, and I'm supposed to be all Christmas cheery, and it's hard enough because I don't like Christmas. Well, I do like, no, no, I don't like Christmas. I like seeing family and stuff, but I just don't like Christmas. For a start, they have the same 10 songs that they've had for the last fucking 15 years. Fuck my life. Although, if we're going with that, can I play my Christmas song of Killing in the Name of, please? No, we're going to play Dominic the Donkey. No. All day. No, that was a Christmas repeat. song. I'll no. have you know that got to... <coughs> no, no. It's Dominic the no. Donkey. Christmas Jiggy number Jiggy. one. <coughs> Killing in the Name of. Rage yeah. Against the Machine. That was Christmas number one. And we've got the sausage roll one. Was that with Christmas? Was that a Christmas one? I don't know. Shouldn't talk your mouthful anyway. It's rude. <laughs> well, we'll leave it here and we'll come back on the well, on the road trip. If I don't, if I don't stop chuntering on. Yeah. I think it was a Christmas one though. I can't remember. But... To be honest, I could be making it up though. Mm. So I have burger and then we're. Uh, we're <laughs> I'm not a big fan of this bloody um, limited neck movement malarkey. This is what you normally have to deal with. <laughs> oh, hey. I don't want to recommend with a neck brace. Not having a fringe because you can't see anything in your peripheral on one side. <laughs> oh, I should probably check that's locked actually. Yeah, there's been a couple of times where I've done that. I've gone home and I'm like, oh, I didn't even lock the door. Good, 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 good. You got your uh, drop foots a bit, uh, a bit lot, a bit lot today. Yeah, oh, okay. Conscious foot to heel to toe stuff. I forget when I'm tired. Yeah, I open the side door so you could go in through the side and get through. Can't be like sensible. Might well, be yeah. easier. Yeah. Drop foot. Uh. Well, you're going in Sisyphus in a minute anyway, so. Yeah, I just I keep I forget. I've got to remember to retrain your foot to. Well, it shows how heel, no, it just shows how tired you are. Heel, um, toe it. You'd be fine if you weren't tired. I just don't look anywhere near as graceful as elegant as I would like to, but I can get in. I just don't look pretty doing it. <laughs> 
but I've got a, a, my compression gloves which I'll be putting on and I've got a little uh, rug because it's surprisingly chilly when you don't move so you get quite cold in a wheelchair don't you and we're getting some crutches for that as well while we're up there if you look at a walker grab some equipment for your dad all ready to drop over on tomorrow when we walk the dogs I'm guessing can I go the Christmas walk? yeah yeah Christmas walks thought we all might go yeah Jay might like it too yeah all right Fixed to that. I'm in. Oh shit. Yeah, no, I'm definitely getting. I'm tired because I just got my foot caught in that um, that flat bit. I'm tired. So delicate because I was tired. You might want to take your jackets off because you get hot in a minute. That's a very valid point. I hadn't thought that far ahead, baby. If I take one jacket off because then I'll keep warm. So that's hot. Yeah, otherwise you ruin the effect of it. <laughs> you won't feel it. You'll ruin it. You'll feel the cold. Correct. What's the what's what's the fold, what's the mom phrase? What's it? You won't feel the benefit. Yeah, that's the one. Not that you can tell that I'm sore. Oh wait, no. Fine. Ah, brain fee. Ironically, even though I'm flustered to shit, I'm very good at driving. Even do you know what I mean? I never let it up with my driving because especially I just I, I think it's one of those things when I'm sore I did that but if I've got something to do I just do it does that make sense probably not yeah, it does I also got some little conversion things so that we can um we can now use all of the amazingly useful multi tools but that also means I can flatline that's a USB cable if I need to, to flatline it and we've got a, it just means that we'll be able to use the car a bit more because it's a bit too advanced for us. We're still on USB. Well it's only got USB 3s everywhere isn't it? There's nothing yeah. else. We're, we're still on USBs. Apparently that's old school so there you go. <laughs> you'd think you'd, you'd think we'd be past that point but no apparently not. As he's going I shall crack me sunglasses out because the crypt's got to look the part. I feel very much like um, uh, uh, what was it, Parker and um, uh, Penelope? You know, Penelope wanted... Parker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's lady. That's what it yeah. feels very much like. Lady Penelope. Yeah, it feels very much like that kind of. Uh, I'm, I'm Lady Penelope myself here. Pink helps, I think. Although, I haven't got so much of a girlified cripple machine. Give me time, though. I can't wait for Ermintrude to get her uh, makeover as well. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Getting her up on a set of ramps. So I, I can... get her back end because I'm a rump girl. So I get to decorate her bum. Don't worry, I won't tram stamp her. <laughs> <laughs> I could, but I won't because I, I, that's just mean, right? <laughs> Something really 90s and tribal, like the cliche tramp, no? <laughs> or maybe like tribal with a butterfly. Uh, there you go. Speed bumps. Well, it makes you realise what the speed bumps are like from my point of view. But this chair's obviously... Um, a little bit springier. Yeah, the, uh, they've obviously cushioned it a bit. And you can definitely feel the difference. So this is why I have an issue with everybody in there, how they drive their cars. And, whether, and how they build yeah. new parking, uh, new estates with no bloody parking. So you've got they've to got do... Kind of yeah. drive off-road to go on-road. Because it just isn't space. Well, they designed... So the thing is, right, they designed it with a green fucking idea in place where people would just like, oh, but we can go green, so we'll have to cycle to work. Problem is, Salisbury doesn't have that much fucking work, so it's a commuter town. It's a bit like Stafford. And the problem is, if you take out the, the that side of things, then people need cars. And, you know, most people, if they've got two people who can drive, then they'll have two cars because of separate reasons. I mean, if you're at work all day, I can't just wait for you to get back if I need something or I've got a doctor's appointment so you have to have two cars if you've got children so it's just a given because there's no way you can guarantee otherwise and then you get two cars where you've got no bloody parking spaces and then wonder why it all goes a bit tits up but don't worry we've been very green about it and they knew exactly what they were doing as well that's what pisses me off they knew what they were doing but they could put a few more fucking housing lots on there and sell that fucking shit it's a beautiful Christmas Eve though Look, old Sarah's looking good. It's looking, it's looking very old Sarah, me. I do like old Sarah. It was always my like go-to uh, place to kind of 
to chill out if I got stressed. Then we've got the COVID test centre. Yep, yeah, right next to the, uh, right it where? used to be our uh, park and ride. Park and ride, but now but it's... It's uh, our test centre now. It never seems that busy though. No, it's not. You see around the side, there's nobody ever in it. No, I always hear people talking about the test and stuff, but I, I never see anybody. Well, you hear about like, up north. I where, occasionally see people going in, but not really. Yeah, and you hear up north where people say, you know, you've got to wait for hours and queues. Yeah. Across. I know somebody walked straight into there and hadn't even booked it, did it on the app there and then Yeah, no, you can just walk in, the, in yeah. yeah. And did the, did the test, so. Yeah, but it's bad because it just goes to show that in some places, obviously, you've got the infrastructure and other places you don't. And then also, it depends on how committed you are, I suppose, and then and the populace of the town is to wanting to care about the virus or ignoring it. Well, so and also if cities. people are being like, well, fuck the government, then they won't go testing, will yeah, they? And cities as well, of course. We're, we're more rural. Yeah. We're a rural city, so we get all the city resources without any hassle of being like massively populated. Posh people with big houses rather than yeah, blocks, yeah. city blocks. Yeah, yeah, farmers with lots of land and things yeah. rather than like actual blocks of flats and stuff. Like my town, Stafford, it's got more in it, like blocks of flats wise and shit like that, than Salisbury House. Yeah. So Salisbury's really just a town, a town where the uh, town with the, with the yeah, front there's yeah. a cathedral. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. So you can definitely tell I'm concentrating on driving because my brain just goes to words. It just goes to words. But yeah, the traffic, as usual, always bad. I swear, like, that's the one thing that's terrible about Salisbury. I love it because it's a really rural place and you can go five minutes out of the city and you can find fields and it's beautiful, but fuck me if the infrastructure and the way the roads are set out is fucking stupid. Not only is it fucking stupid, but, like, they they don't care about putting, like, extra infrastructure in place. Like, they could have a ring road, but no one's going to opt into the ring road because they don't want it on their land. I mean, for fuck's sake. But you'll be the first to bitch about the fucking bottleneck of fucking traffic that we get. Santa's at the hospital. Yeah, he's come He's come adventuring to visitors. He went to go visit us at the hospital and he said hi to me, so I mustn't be on the naughty list. That's my that's my theory anyway. Oh, God, now you're welcome to the uh, hell that is Salisbury fucking hospital parking. I swear to God. Wow. Well, yep. You don't out. use the pavements, you fucking idiots. It's not like that's what it's made for, you tit bags. Ugh. The helipad? Yeah, that gets used that gets used quite a bit. Yeah, well yeah, fuck me. We seem to get our fucking field or yeah, well, football we, we field live seems next, to be quite We live quite next popular. to the um, uh, playing field. So of course they use that as a landing point for the uh, uh, air, air ambulance. ambulance. You can feel that in the fucking walls, can't you? So it's we like uh, boom, quite boom, regularly boom. get uh, an ambulance sort of 100 metres away from us landing. I've got several videos of it. I must, I must. Have put, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll clip one into this. Yeah, that would be quite cool actually, because you've got some really good footage yeah. of them. Haven't so you? I'll clip. I'll clip one. Not only have you arrived, but because it's Christmas Eve, it seems to be an actual proper, like, disabled spaces, babes. Yep. I'm almost fucking, I'm almost struck, struck uh, wordless, but And we've got plenty of time because it's uh, seven minutes past one and yes. we're not due until half past. Well, I thought we could stop off and see well, if the cafe's we... open, maybe we grab a coffee. And also, it's also one of the things, I mean, if we pop in early, because he... You, yeah, he'll probably be there anyway, just, so yeah, yeah exactly. just, I reckon he'll just start early. Yeah, because he's we're probably the minimum, we're probably he's the last appointment. Got, yeah, yeah, I don't think he's got many today. No. We go, we go <laughs> Mind you, answer. it goes to show how much he actually cares and appreciates that uh, it's a struggle and how much I really want to change and do things that he's actually making the appointment on Christmas Eve. Like, can't I can't fault uh, the pain clinic. The pain clinic's been fl bloody fantastic here. It's just, it's just every other fucking department I've been to. The right. rheumatology department's just, just, I just got told I was too complex and then we went to the next place and I wasn't apparently complex enough. Well, I don't know. We went to that place and we basically got a diagnosis, didn't we? Because we had, I haven't think, I think I didn't really do one after Stanmore, did we? No. Kind of broke my spirit a little bit. Because <laughs> we went all the way there. It's an eight hour round trip basically for her to diagnose me with a condition I've been diagnosed with since I was 19. And... The side, I'd waited three, two, two two and a half, no, two, almost two years, right? So nine, 18 months I'd waited. No, nine, no, 
20 months I waited. I finally got a bloody appointment and I wanted to know how to manage my illness and she didn't even talk about it. And then when we got our report, that's the kicker, when we got our report, she um, was making notes on stuff that she hadn't even asked me about. Yeah, that didn't That's go through well. Fucking bullshit. So no, I'm I'm going to be um I'm going to be chasing that one up because I've had no I've had no email back from them, which means that they obviously don't care. So I'm obviously going to have to get pals involved because that's the only way they're going to listen. And it's just severely disappointing because you think, what's the point of waiting all this time, fighting to try and get someone to listen to you, for the specialist people to just to fob you off and go, we'll come back in eighteen months. Mm. No, no advice about how to manage it. No, how are you dealing with your pain right now? None of that fucking bullshit. Just fuck off now. I've ticked a box for you. Go piss off. And I'm just like, I'll spin your chair around. Yeah. I don't know if I can with all this shit on it, babes. Uh, yeah, good point actually. Yeah. Mm. But we'll do it one day, don't we? But yeah, so it just makes it really difficult because I, I went there with so many hopes, and I know I went there with probably more hopes than I should have had, but. I mean, shit, I don't know, like, I, I don't know what kind of hopes I should have gone there with, to be fair, because, I mean, they, they were just, it was just totally, it totally broke my spirit, because I thought, well, if I can't even get the specialist to listen to me, then what's the bloody point? Fortunately, the pain clinic and the anaesthetist, 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 I'm not very good with that word, the um, anaesthetist, uh, the guy who does the anaesthetic, He's, um, he, he also, they also do pain medication and, um, he, he was actually fantastic. We had a telephone consultation with him, didn't we? Mm. And do you know what? In the first time in like maybe three, four years, I actually had a doctor turn around and say, hats off to you for managing your condition because you must be in so much pain and not increasing your meds. So you've got GPs haranguing me to reduce my medication when I go see a specialist and they actually say, bloody hell, I'm impressed you're managing on what you've got and there's such a disconnect between the two and it's such a shame because it's fine if you've got like if the occasional problem but gps don't understand enough about chronic illness and they don't care to learn enough about chronic illness and it's madness because now you can't even get a named gp really so you can't even get a gp to learn for you so that then you know they're educated in it to then have a conversation because then it's impossible to get the fucking appointment with them because you don't have named doctors anymore so somebody who's a chronic pain sufferer as soon as i go in there i've got a, i've got a 10 minute appointment if i can get in there because usually they still send me up the stairs even though i fucking put on the notes that i'm in a wheelchair but then they they, they talk to you and they're like oh well we, we've run out of time now and it's like well i know but i haven't even managed to explain what it is yet because i can't just tell you off the top of my head because if i just tell you i'm fainting all the time you won't think it's serious but if i have to explain to you that i'm fainting all the time which is I'm terrified of now damaging myself even more. I'm hitting my head. There have been times where I've given myself severe concussion and try not to do things that make you faint, which is everything, is a little bit fucking unhelpful. Mind you, it's not as bad as the first doctor. She genuinely looked at me and was like, well, you're tall though, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, tall girls do faint sometimes. I'm like, I, I, yeah, but I've been tall my entire life. I've only just started fainting. Like, can't help but feel like if height was a problem, it'd have been a problem when I first grew, not fucking like once I've grown into my fucking like. Who who stops growth spurts and then gets fucking problems with it? Do you know what I mean? Oh, ow. God, I'm achy. Right, my jacket's is on. Got my legs out. I did that the most walkable way possible, didn't I? I've got my flat. Flats are out. Effort. I might have to tuck my uh, fringe a bit though. Put my flaps down and blinded myself. Flaps much. down. Is there anyone behind us? No, nope, we're all good. And I will blank it up because it's cold and I it's surprising how cold your legs get in the wheelchair. I seem to forget this, so it's a good job Nick reminds me really, because I, I get a bit enthusiastic and go outside and then I come back and I'm like, oh I can't feel my legs. <laughs> is that meant to happen? The only problem with this is it's got like a unicorn's head which I've tucked into my lap, so this Christmas the unicorns are doing the naughty things. for it though in it with a unicorn I don't think I've got that kind of confidence 
Right. That's really hard to do when you can't look back because of your neck. Oh, my back's so stiff as well. Oh, I love that. I love the fact they actually have put a mirror there just for that reason. Uh huh. Ah. Although I'd like to say, is it not impressive that I know my, my car now so I know how to reverse without looking? Good job, really, because at the moment I'm really fucking stiff. There she plays. Tucking my fur fall in. So I tell you about when I was in town with Dave and I parked up and uh, the, the power cut off because it's uh, you, you have to unlock and lock it because it, it times out after a while and um, I was halfway through trying to get it out and it stopped and I've never had such a bad heart attack in my life because <laughs> I was like fuck I have no idea what to do now fuck and I was like I'm gonna have to ring up Nick and be like uh hey Nick you know how you said like I'm gonna have more independence uh, about that <laughs> <laughs> I need some help. Cyclist actually waited till it all went up and was all sorted. He was like, oh, I just thought, just in case I need, you needed any help, I was like, actually, did you really appreciate that? Because I was like, I'm not going to lie, I had a mini heart attack. I just tried to make it look brave. <laughs> I was like, I was panicking. Because <laughs> that, that's the first time it's ever let me down. And I was like, no, it's fine, Hermes. You won't let me down. Please don't let me down, Hermes. Have you not, them? not now everyone's looking. Yeah. No, but now I have. She's all locked up, and we've got to ring up um, Mercedes as well because yeah. my alarm honks occasionally. Yeah. Uh, have you heard the sound it makes sometimes when you're driving? It's like, ah. Yeah, six, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's on the highway code. You're all right. I've got on with it. Yeah, oh, don't worry, I've got faith on that one, darling. You know, you look as though you know exactly what you're doing. Well, I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not busy enough, people will just go with it. Right. Have a wonderful Christmas, yeah, won't you, my you. darling? Take care. Have a good Christmas. Told you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a nice. A bit on the chilly side. Yeah, nice clear. I don't mind these days. Yeah, no, I don't mind them, but you can tell the look. You can see yeah. the difference in my yeah, hands so yeah. changing. The differences between you are hot blooded. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, when I'm walking, it's not too bad. Although I still actually get cold, though, don't I? Maybe I'm a lizard. Maybe I'm part of the lizard people. <laughs> they just don't know it yet, darling. Then the, the lizard in me goes away because I have to make snow angels. Because <laughs> that's what snow's made for, no? Just me. <laughs> just me. <laughs> yeah, I just can't get back up again. No, you say, right, okay, so once it really, when it, so it must have been years ago when I was like a teenager with my cousin and it like proper badly snowed, so we went round and made snow angels and everyone was born. <laughs> and they wake up on like Christmas Day and they're like, what the fuck? Because there's this like, weird. And the thing is, they've been filled in slightly, so there's just these random. And I jumped into the hole to make it look as though like there was no one there, so there's no footsteps. So yeah, everyone was just left with a random uh, angel in their lawn. <laughs> See, at least my tricks didn't get anyone in trouble. My brothers were a little more. This kind of bit of the uh, the. The illness doesn't really get looked at very well. It's the, the acute stuff that gets looked at very well. However, if I can build up my body beforehand, then it lessens the acute problems, yeah. and that's where it really matters. So yeah. Yeah. I think it, you know, it's underrated. Places like here are underrated for what they can actually do. So yeah. it's, and, and the thing is, it, it is one of those things where it's an incremental thing. So you, you, you won't see the benefit in any. Nice in here, though. It is nice. Oh, Martin, this is like, this is like my idea of a proper gym. It's a kind of, it's a cripple's gym, this is. Well, it is a cripple's gym, isn't it? It's got cross too. This is a cool gym. I think that one does look really fun. Even though it would kill me. Start with. Yeah. Okay, and then increase. 
that's that one. Straight leg raise is safe. For the moment, I would leave that just, one. Do, okay. Well, I'll just like try um, and do the whole tensing and I'm you, bad. I, that's when I panic about not doing something and then I feel like if I, if I don't do something that day because I'm crap, I'm dropping the ball and then... Which is, I, I probably great. frame my mind a bit. You're yeah. doing great. Um, I reckon we'll give you sort of four weeks or so again and yeah. then sort of let's sort of pain and then just sort of time. Yeah, no, that works for me. Yeah, that would be, yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll show you my yeah, after a while I can definitely tell my cognitive ability goes down when I get hot because my brain stopped working in there, didn't it? I got a little bit flustered and hot. But yeah, I'm all sorted now because I've got my neck exercises and I've got my knee exercises uh, as well as my other ones to go. And I'm thinking maybe I can build up to doing it on um, the fit ball. Like, you know, the whole leg out ones. Yeah. I could do that on the fit ball. Yeah. And I could gaff tape some rice to my leg. No? Because then we could go from like 10 grams to 50 if we wanted. <laughs> no? We could do it in like. No. 10 just... gram increments. Well, if you're worried, we could do it in 10 gram increments. I'm all for like 250 kilograms, but, uh, but apparently that's too enthusiastic. <laughs> so we could start with like, say, I don't know, 250 grams, maybe work up to the kilogram bit. No? Yeah. Just have to explain to my mum why we've got um, rice gaffer taped in a fucking freezer bag, won't we? <coughs> actually, to be fair, I don't know if my mum would actually question me on that or whether she'd just be like, Yeah, okay, Fee, of course you do. Or you could do a bottle of water because water takes the water as well. Yeah, but water's really hard to tape onto yeah. your leg, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, because you, you've, you've got to put it on both sides, so it'd have to go round, wouldn't it? Because yeah. you have to, wait, it would have to be, would it have to be fully distributed weight, though? No. Well, I'm just thinking if it was on that side, wouldn't it strengthen one side up more than the other? No. I feel like that's why you have to apply weight evenly, though. Yeah, probably. I can't, I can't, are you, you just saying no because you're saying no? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like it was a bit no, not gonna lie. I have a suspicion, so it's one of those It was a bobby, though. It was a no, I have no idea, but no. Yeah, no, the way I would think about it is because you're saying, like, with the resistance bands, it's the it's the distribution, isn't it? Yeah. So it would be having to even maintain the distribution <coughs> in the right way around the ankle. So I think rice and gaffer tape's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Or they're easier to clean up if you get everywhere there's sugar as well. Or if you go for flour, it'd be an um, explosive nightmare. <laughs> Just me. So how was that, then? That was fantastic. Hamish was really good actually. He gave me some um, really useful uh, neck exercises and um, some knee exercises and stuff like that. And I have to say, it did make a big difference actually. And it's, it was kind of reassuring as well because he gave me a bit of a pep talk <laughs> about perspective. But it was really good. But then, yeah, I, I, my, my hip popped out, so I had to click it back in. And I don't think uh, poor Hamish was expecting it to um, as much as it did because he was a bit like, Ugh. And he does physio, bless him. But yeah, so uh, we're we're all ready, and I'm knackered now. So I didn't, it's like, yeah, I know. I can already tell you're knackered. That's why I got you to sit in the chair. But yeah, so I'm knackered now. So I'm going to move my wheelchair and into its um, more relaxed position because it will take the stress off my hips a bit. Um, she used this as an excuse so she can fall asleep in the back. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be picking up Dave, and then we're going to be. Um, I'm going to be going home and. Um, Having a cup of tea and a rest, and then I'm going to be wrapping presents. Crabs, isn't it? Yeah, well, the, Hello. No, the thing is, is uh, <laughs> Dave. Hello, we, I got I'm fully kitted. We've, we've kidnapped you for Christmas, haven't we? Dave? Yeah, I'm fully kitted. Yeah. So stud, you're going to come join us on Christmas Eve. So we're going to take yeah. Dave away with us and feed him up and uh, let him jib out and yeah, and go to the pigs. Yeah, and have <laughs> and have, and have, have Christmas nice, with us. A, yeah, he can have a good. He can have a good. He'll be well fed and watered. Have a nice chill out. Ah, it's just happy excellence of food, guys. Uh, I'm happy for us all. I really can't be for us all, but Chris. Dave, I wouldn't even fucking trust you to be able to fucking do your laces, mate. Oh, I've asked for the evidence. I mean, yes, I mean, practically, yes. I would ask you for the yellow laces.